going on everybody it is april 16th and we have some monday baseball and a not so bad main slate uh 10 games no real weather concerns uh and we are getting back to the normal routine joining me as always fellow osmo.com writer jake hari jake what's going on not much josh uh just trying to get some of the snow gone here. We got <laughs> about 16 inches this weekend uh, in the Minneapolis area. So, so nice to, yeah, nice to have no weather concerns today. MLB DFS was was rough this weekend, just yeah. trying to figure out who was going to play and who was getting postponed and who might play, who might get postponed. So it would be nice to have a, a good slate with some pitchers that I like. So I'm excited. Well, you were getting buried in 16 inches of snow. I was uh, basking in 70 degree weather and the the wonderful rhymes of ludicrous. So oh, nice, excellent weekend. Awesome. <laughs> very that very different like... for each other. <laughs> sounds like my kind of weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was entertaining. I guess would be the best word. I wouldn't say good. I would say entertaining. Oh, that's like DFS. It's not always good, but it's at least entertaining. It should go better for Ludacris this time, better than it did for Nelly a couple years ago when he was uh, arrested the day after for some drug and gun possession. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, okay. let's get to baseball. First game up on the docket, Pirates and Rockies. Uh, Pirates with a 4.5 run implied total. Rockies, 4.0. It's a 56% chance to win for the Pirates. Stephen Brault uh, going for Pittsburgh. Uh, German Marquez going for Colorado. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in Brault or Marquez. This this isn't really the spot for me, uh, but I like half like those guys just in general. But I don't find this to be like a terribly appealing pitching matchup. What about you? Me too. I'm I'm sort of indifferent on both of these guys. It, you know, the, you can make a case for kind of either one yeah. because of how they're priced on DraftKings specifically and um, and FanDuel actually. Now that I look at it, yeah. So, I don't know. I think I'm just going to pay up a little more for pitching. There are quite a few guys I like in the 7 to 8 range. So, I just don't think I'll be having to dive this deep for pitching. Mm -hmm. um, Marquez was fine in Coors a couple days ago until he got suspended. <laughs> uh, this is a tough matchup, though, against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is one of the best teams in plate discipline stats so far. And then Brault is going to get all these righties for Colorado at the top of the lineup. So, I don't think that I'll be going to either one of these pitchers. Yeah, it's, there's just enough out there today that like these guys are perfectly acceptable on the shorter slate. Not anybody you really need to look at when you have this many games. Right. Um, do you prefer Rockies bats more here or Pirates bats more? I like how the Rockies lineup looks like it's going to be constructed with LeMayhew... Ionetta, then Blackman in the three-hole story Desmond. So I like so those top I. five. And there's some wind blowing out to left, it looks like right now. Okay. Not that that matters a ton here, I don't think, because it's 40 degrees. But it is a nice little boost for some of these Rockies righties. So I like Ionetta a lot. Yeah. And then <laughs> I, I hate playing Trevor Story chalk, so I don't really want him if he's going to be chalk. But um, batting cleanup, it looks like. And then Blackman. So three, four, five, or two, three, four would be the guys I'm looking at. If you want to full stack it, you would look at Desmond for 3,700 is a pretty nice price, but he's not hitting the ball hard at all to start the season. Yeah, I like that Ionetta play for for DK. Um, getting him in the two hole, getting a lefty on the hill. Uh, that's a pretty good recipe for filling out a catcher spot. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, outside of Blackman's price, um, which is obviously high and I, you know, I don't love the lefty lefty matchup. I would really only want him in a part of a stack. I'd be I'd be more than okay having uh, a rocky stack. The pricing on DK is really nice. Like, I don't love having Ionetta on Fanduel just because of the lack of a true catcher position. But he's also twenty three hundred, and if he's part of a stack, I'm more than okay with that. Uh, same for Desmond. Like, he might not be hitting well, but twenty six hundred uh, is a price point that I can get to if I'm fully stacking these guys. So something like Desmond Story, Ionetta, and LeMayhew would be a direction mm -hmm. I would go. And then if I wanted to, like, really match, like, I don't know, like, Blackman's ownership will probably be relatively low here. 
I would guess. Yeah, just because he's the most expensive player in the stack, and it's lefty lefty, I think yeah. that'll scare some people away. So I, I like do like having him in there then. Yeah, I like including guys in lefty lefty matchups if you're running out of full stack. Yeah. So I, gonna... I'd go anywhere in that in that first five and be and be happy. Yeah, I agreed. Um, I don't have a huge problem with a pirate stack either. Uh, besides Polanco's price, which is very high right now for, uh, well, both sites, um, I'm fine with him in a stack. But if I were looking at, like, a one-off guy, oh, Josh Bell looks really nice on DK. Bell for 3900 I like him on both sites, actually. I don't know. I have, like, a weird affinity for him, and I don't know why. Bell and Polanco were the two guys that I had written down just sort of as one-offs. I don't yeah. know that I want to stack up the Pirates here. Um, yeah, they wouldn't be my first choice or anything, but 4.5 run implied total. It's not too shabby. No, it's, it's not. So I'm, maybe I'm missing a little bit something here because I'm sure if the weather was a little nicer, it would be even a couple points higher than that. Yeah, there's just something about the pricing that I think makes the Rockies look like a better stack option. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see any like one-off plays for the Pirates that I would really want to go crazy for. Um, it just doesn't feel like that kind of matchup. This game's just kind of there for me. Uh, if people show up in my lineups, fine. If they don't, I probably won't notice and try to prioritize it. Yeah, I'm I'm not crazy about it either way. So, yeah, that's, I feel bad with this being the first game. I wish like the Cubs Cardinals <laughs> game would have sorted first, just so yeah. it was more interesting, but. It's just kind of blah. Yep. Let's move on. This one's better. Cubs and Cardinals. Uh, Cubs with a 4.8 run implied total. Cardinals 4.2. 56% chance to win for Chicago. It's Tyler Chatwood on the hill going against Adam Wainwright for the Cardinals. Um, I like Chatwood a little bit here on FanDuel. He's got a decent price and, you know, a pretty solid chance to pick up a win. Uh I don't really have any major interest in Wainwright on FanDuel. He grades out like pretty well, but I don't like the idea of him being a, a pretty sizable underdog. Um, are you looking at either of these guys on DK? The pitchers, I'm not really interested in. Wainwright is 6,800, and he's just not missing any bats. Yeah. He's got a 5.5 and 5.6 swing strike rate in its first two starts. And I don't think he's going to be really missing any of these Cubs bats. They're going to get Rizzo back today, it looks like. Or Joe Madden expects Rizzo to be in the lineup, from what I'm reading. Oh, really? So, I don't have him in right now, so yeah, that's interesting. So where I'm looking at right now, they don't have him in the projected lineup. But I just, I was just wondering why he was missing, so I just Google searched him, and all these articles came up that they expect him to be back Monday. So okay. if he's in that lineup, then that is a big bump to – the Cubs bats actually, especially if you're going to face a guy that's not going to make you swing and miss and Rizzo is not likely to swing and miss anyways. No. So he's a really big bat for them in the middle of that lineup, assuming he's able to get the start today. Yeah, that definitely, well, it doesn't change my outlook on the Cubs because I like them sort of regardless, but it certainly makes them better. Uh, yeah. And that'll probably shift that unless it's already priced into that total. Uh, it might shift you know, pull them up another tenth of a run, Just widen that gap a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't have much interest in Wainwright. Uh, just he's, he doesn't miss enough bats, which very much scares me, particularly against a Cubs team that, you know, is loaded <laughs> pretty much straight mm -hmm. through the order, especially if they get uh, Rizzo back. So I would be looking at a Cubs stack here. I think I looked before... There's not a total out, so I have it in as nine right now. It looked like there was pretty healthy winds blowing out, or at least that was the projection. So I would be very interested in a Cubs stack over anything in this game. Um, but I feel like I need to touch on Chatwood just a little bit. Uh, doesn't have the best control in the world. Um, can miss some bats. I like the idea of getting somebody at 56% chance to win. If Rizzo's back, even better. Uh, Chatwood, the fifth most expensive starter on FanDuel. So he's grading out pretty well for me. Um, he'll be one of the guys that I have some of. I, there are a couple guys that, I have, that I'll have that i have tonight um, that I think are going to spread out my pitching ownership a little bit. 
Um, most of it not at the top end, um, but we'll get to most. We'll, we'll get to those guys later. Uh, Cubs stack I like. Uh, I'm, I'm in for Ian Happ. I'm hoping, you know, this might change the way that this is constructed. I would guess that Zobris probably wouldn't be in the spot that he is in. Um, but he and Hap look great to me today. Yeah, Hap, um, he's not hitting the ball that hard right now. But um, I really like using him against righties, specifically righties that can't uh, make you miss, like Wainwright hasn't been able to do. So I really like Hap. Um, love Rizzo if he's in the lineup. I, I can't see his price right now, though. And then... Um, Let me check it. Just in general, I just love him against a righty pretty much always. Schwarber. Um, and then I really like Wilson Contreras as well at catcher for 4,100. It's righty-righty, but he is just crushing the ball right now. His average exit velocity is um, one of the highest in, the, in for the Cubs, at least. Um, he's top 30 in the MLB in April. So Contreras hitting the ball very well. This is another subpar weather game. So that's the only drawback I have for a, a full cub stack, me being okay. a one lineup guy. I, I like to target um, good weather. I mean, who doesn't? But sure. <laughs> um, like if I if I was making a bunch of lineups, I definitely have a, a couple cub stacks in there. Chatwood for me is a little bit too expensive at eighty five hundred. Like you said, he can he can miss bats at times. Does struggle with control. He's good at creating soft contact. So if he was like. 7k on DraftKings or like 7200 i think i would have a little bit more interest but with guys like jaime garcia and luis castillo and blake snell that are all cheaper than him by pretty wide margins i think i'll just pass on chatwood and take the k upside with some other guys gotcha uh so we mentioned rizzo pricing rizzo uh minimum salary on fanduel tonight <laughs> what yeah two whoa thousand. Okay, that that's so dumb though because now, if he's in the lineup, which he's from, gonna be very chalky, <laughs> and he should be. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. like, yeah, it's it's thirty three degrees. There's a wind blowing out to right, fifteen miles an hour right now. Um, yeah, I don't know how you don't play a two K Anthony Rizzo against the righty, and then on DK, he's forty six. Okay. So, nothing. still a good price. Yeah, like he's that's fine. Uh, it you know it's just what he's supposed to be, not uh, two thousand. So yeah, if he ends up in the lineup, um, look for Anthony Rizzo as a Fanduel spotlight hitter because, I mean, you have to play him. <laughs> There's just no other option. Yeah. That's, well, you don't that's have ridiculous. to play him, but like he's going to be owned in a preposterous amount of lineups. Right. Yeah, so I'm in for any stack of the Cubs, really, uh, especially if Rizzo gets in there for FanDuel. I like Hap a lot. I like Zobrist a lot. Um, I don't love Bryant's price as much, but, you know, he just comes with the territory. If I were doing a Cubs stack and I have these, well, I wouldn't even need as much money if I had Rizzo in there. I was going to say, like, oh, it might be a more expensive stack. It might be for one of my lower-salaried pitchers, but if you're getting... Rizzo at 2,000, potentially. Uh, yeah, you can pretty much go any direction you want. So I'm going to end up on a lot of Cubs tonight. Um, yeah, it's just, me too. It's lining up pretty well for me. I don't have a ton of interest in Cardinals. Uh, Dexter Fowler still grading out exceptionally for me on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, part of that is just being at the top of the order and not having poor implied totals. 4.2 runs for the Cardinals is more than okay for a, a team that's projected to lose. Um, so it's not like I would have foul. I would probably wouldn't have Fowler in like one-off scenarios, but he's fine. I just, I don't really like a FanDuel Cardinal stack. Uh, they're all really overpriced and it's a lot of righty bats going against Chatwood. So I'd be more likely to do it on DK. Like Tommy Pham is $900 cheaper on DraftKings, which is really hard to do. 900 is so much. Uh, but, like, Carpenter's only $100 more on DK. Uh, Jose Martinez is $500 cheaper. Like, I'd, I'd just prefer DK's pricing to the for the Cardinals, but I won't have much of them on FanDuel. 
Uh, yeah, on DraftKings, they're a little bit more affordable with how the, the salary cap goes. The two guys that I sort of like as one-offs, and they probably won't even be on my lineups, but uh, Matt Carpenter, dual position eligibility for 3,800 on DraftKings yeah. against a righty, um, and then Fowler for 4K. But I honestly don't know if I'll have any Cardinals. I probably won't even end up considering them because I don't really want to use one-offs from a game that's 33 degrees, for hitters at least. Completely agree. Let's move on to the next game. Blue Jays and Royals. Uh, Blue Jays with a five-run implied total, which is monstrous. Uh, Royals, 3.5. 65% chance to win for the Jays. Jaime Garcia uh, throwing for Toronto. And Eric Skogland going for Kansas City. Um, Garcia is my number one pitcher on FanDuel. Uh, and it's not really close. Um, I would feel probably the same way about him on DraftKings, just a little bit more muted since um, like the peripheral stats are more important than the win there. Uh, I'm going to have Garcia in a bundle of lineups. Where are you landing here on uh, on Garcia? Yeah, I like Garcia quite a bit. On DraftKings, he's only 7,100. So that's why I, I'm off guys like, like Chatwood. Yeah. I just think that Garcia is in a better spot against a – a team that I'm not really scared of in terms of their power. Garcia has been really good this year, um, if I remember correctly. So I'm just looking at stuff up now because last night I had uh, Aaron Sanchez slotted to pit, or Fangraphs had Aaron Sanchez, and they hadn't updated it. But uh, he was really good against the White Sox. He was uh, okay against the Rangers. The whiffs are up a little bit from last year, if I remember correctly. And then... I don't know, he's 7,100, and he's a pretty substantial favorite at home. So, And I like all these Toronto bats. So I like Garcia a lot. I don't – I like if he was 8,500 like Chatwood, I probably wouldn't look at him as much. But for 7,100, you could definitely talk me into some Jaime Garcia. Yeah, 6,500 on FanDuel with what I'm assuming will be the highest chance at a win out of anybody on the board. Uh, he's going to be popular, but – I, I can't get enough here. I'm, I, I couldn't be more in. <laughs> um, he's going to pop up in the optimizer like crazy for me, and I'm more than okay with it. Yeah, and you can make a case for a fade, or like, like, like usually you can make a case for these cheap guys to stack against them, but who are you even going to be scared of in this Royals lineup? Like, yeah, the, the roof's closed or whatever, but... Uh, All their real hitters are lefties. Yeah, like Mustakis and Duda are the two guys you're really scared of. Okay, Solaire. Yeah, one guy that that can go yard. He's got pretty good power, but there are some strikeouts at the bottom of the order. If Almonte's leading off, this is a guy that strikes out over twenty five percent against lefties. Utera fans and miss or fans a lot against lefties. Uh, Duda a ton against lefties. I just I don't know. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of places where this could go wrong for Garcia. So I like it for 7,100 and on FanDuel as well, where the win's really important. I feel like I say this like every time we look at the Royals, but five guys with sub 400 slugging percentage projected yeah. from Steamer. Like I just, I can't get enough of Garcia tonight. And I can't get enough of the Blue Jays' bats. Um, five run implied total is. Currently the highest on the entire slate. Uh, lots of righty bats to go against the lefty Scogland. Um, it seems like a situation where they might chase him early, so that might not, you know, they might get all of their benefit in the first three innings of the game. Um, but I'm in for a ton of Pierce. Uh, I'm in for, you know, Solarte, Smoke, Hernandez. You know, Russell Martin looks great. Uh, I I can't get enough of the Blue Jays today, whether it's on the hill or or their sticks. Um, I love the Toronto righties. I'm I'm right there with you, Pierce. If he's leading off, and these guys are going to be owned on DraftKings because yeah, outside of Justin Smoke, they're just not expensive at all. No. You can pay up for a Degrom and like a Snell or Castillo with this stack pretty comfortably, and still have a lot of salary left over. So, but it, it is a really, really solid play near five run total. 
I love fitting in smoke for 4,800. This guy smashed lefties last year. And I don't think people like playing him against lefties as much for whatever reason. But I love him, Solarte, Teoscar Hernandez at 2,600 batting second. Yeah. Like Pierce leading off for 3,100, just way, way too cheap. And they're all righties. I love Russell Martin at 3,200. I actually like a lot of catchers tonight, which hmm. is odd. Yeah. I've already mentioned Contreras and Ionetta, so three catchers in three games. Yeah. But I love them all. So all these Blue Jays really one through five. And then Grichuk, if he's batting sixth, but right now it looks like he's in the eighth spot. Yeah, I have him in at eight right him. now. Uh, if he were batting sixth, um, he would He would only be 2,100 on FanDuel. I'm, I'm in regardless. I mean, I think... He's going to show up a lot in the optimizer just in general because I expect to see the Jays a lot. Yep. Um, and I'm fine with him even in the eight hole. It's just a great spot for the Jays. Yeah, love them all. I, I you know you're you're going to get some substantial ownership on them, but um, you can differentiate elsewhere. You can play the chalk and still have a different lineup. Absolutely, I uh, love it. I love everything that's going on in Toronto tonight. Yeah. Mets and Nats. Uh, Mets with a 4.3 run implied total. Nats, 3.7, which makes me feel like it's wrong, but I don't think that it is. So I'm going to just double-check it quick. Yeah, so the 8-run the total is only out on, like, two sports books, So that could potentially change. Either way. 57% uh, chance to win for the Mets. Uh, Jake DeGrom going for New York. Jeremy Hellickson going for Washington um, I like DeGrom. Uh, he's the most expensive pitcher on the slate on both sites. I don't necessarily have a problem paying all the way up, and I'm sure that I will uh, in a chunk of my lineups um, just to use salary and use some of the lower price stacks. No interest in, in Hillickson. He's not even available on FanDuel, which is crazy to me, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, how much DeGrom do you think you'll end up with? Or, I well, know. I guess it's either 100% yeah. or 0%, but how much do you like DeGrom? <laughs> definitely definitely going to be tough to leave DeGrom off. There are a couple guys I like that are cheaper, but, I mean, he's been fine this year. Like, I don't think he's had a huge game yet. The whiffs are fine. The velocity is fine. So I don't think he's hurt or anything. He had 16.3% swinging strike rate in his first start against the Nats two games ago. Um. I mean, I mean, the Nats are never an easy lineup or an easy lineup to navigate, I should say. Yeah. But he's one of my favorite pitchers, and I'm fine paying 11 5 for him on DraftKings. It's really Bryce Harper and Turner. I think that uh, – I think DeGrom's really bad at holding runners, if I remember. But I don't know. I'm, I'm certainly not looking to use Nats bats, even if I don't play DeGrom. No, not at all. I would love – like – I think Brian Goodwin's in a really nice situation and price, but I'm not just taking one-off guys that have sub 400 projected sluggings against <laughs> against Jake Degrom. It's not right. That's not going to be my best bet. Uh, yeah, I don't like. I think Harper is probably fine on DK. His price is actually two hundred dollars cheaper than it is on Fanduel. Uh, but again, I'm not trying to target guys against Degrom. Uh, that's a little scary. Uh, Met stack is probably not a direction that I really want to go in either. Um, I don't exactly fear the pitching, so like Conforto, it looks okay to me. Um, Astrubal Cabrera looks amazing on DK as usual, four hundred dollars cheaper than he is on FanDuel, so I'd be fine there. Um, so like you can kind of get to a Met stack. You know, Bruce and Gonzalez are okay, but I, I don't, I just don't love them as hitters, really. I don't know. I don't know what to think. I feel like you're going to really like the Mets. I do like the Mets, and I like Conforto and Bruce and Cabrera individually, so I can make a case for the top four stack with Cespedes jammed in between them. Bruce is probably my favorite play. He's just hitting the ball really well. Uh, 93.7 ag, uh, mile an hour average exit velocity. In April for him, so he's hitting the ball really hard. And then um, I always like playing as Drupal Cabrera because he's never really owned, no matter which hand he's facing. And then Conforto for 4600, I'm comfortable with if I'm playing some of these other Mets. 
I don't think it's like my favorite stack, but there is some wind blowing out to right. So it's a boost for some of these lefties, I think. Okay. Yeah, if I were going to do something, it would probably be the first four. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's not a direction that I really love going. I do like Conforto's price. So I'm, I'm not a huge, like, it would be a nice start for me. The places that I would want to look have the best spots. So, like, I can tack an extra guy on and be okay with it. But Bruce and, and Adrian Gonzalez don't grade out really well for me. So I don't expect to see a ton of them coming up. I can see Conforto actually coming up as a one-off outfielder a little bit when I run this first crunch. Not that I really want to go in that direction, but I think that might happen because he's got a really nice price. Yeah, the only problem I have really with the the one through four Mets stack is that you're using up all your three outfield spots yeah. on DraftKings. So that's the only like I usually just pick two out of the three, and I would give the edge to the lefties here, Conforto and Bruce, if okay. I had. To. Not that I'm like trying to intentionally leave off Cespedes, but that's just sort of how I I make my lineups. I don't know if that's a mental thing or or what, but um, I've done it with the Angels a couple times with Otani, Trout, and Upton. But that's really the only time I've done it. I, I hate using three outfielders from one team. Man, Cespedes has not been good this year. No, has, has he been not here's hitting well against Reggie? Uh, he's not been hitting well. Uh, here's the slash line. 190, 266, 362. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his exit velocity is fine. It's over 90 miles an hour on or this month. So taking out those first few games in March... But, yeah, he, he hasn't really been – I mean, he's been quiet, that's for sure. But so is, like, Chris Bryant. Like, these guys will wake up at some point. Yeah, I'm he's assuming. got a negative war right now. Not that that matters or anything, but, like, <laughs> especially for what we're talking about. But it's right. just it's pretty staggering to see in 64 plate appearances. So that's what it needs to warm up. I can yeah. see him not really enjoying the, uh, the cold swings of uh, April in New York. Right. Dealing with snow and stuff. Yeah, a little bit different lifestyle. Yeah. All right, let's 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 move on to the Rays. Unless you have anything else you want to touch on there? Nope, I think that's it. Okay. Rays and Rangers. Uh, 4.5 run implied total for the Rays. 3.5 for the Rangers. Uh, Blake Snell going for the Rays. 61% chance to win. Uh, Martin Perez going for the Rangers, who I feel like at this point pitches every time that we do one of these things. Um, no yeah. thank you on Perez. We'll talk about how uh, he's real bad in a second, I'm sure. Blake Snell uh, looks great. Um, there's just so much good pitching in and around that same area. He's a guy that I'll have a little bit of because of their likelihood of a win. Uh, but I like two guys that bookend him significantly more. So he's going to end up like slipping through the cracks a little bit for me. Uh, he looks a lot better on DK, in my opinion, so I'm anxious to hear your thoughts. I really, really like Snell for 7,800, and I'm not a big Snell guy, but with no Elvis Andrews in that Rangers lineup with this 3.5 total that we're seeing in a really good park, and Snell, I mean, he's going to get ownership, but I, I can't really think of a reason why I don't want to play him. He gets in trouble with walks sometimes. But there are just a ton of guys in this Rangers lineup that strike out um, with the best of them, like Gallo and uh, Mazzara against lefties, Ryan Rua if he's in the lineup. Chu, you can strike out Chu, um, Chirinos. Like, really, Adrian Beltre is the one guy that, that really doesn't strike out against lefties. Yeah. Um, it scares me to play Chalk Blake Snell, but he is 17, <laughs> 17th in wisp for swing this year as well. So swinging strike rate, rate looks great. I don't know. I just I can't think of a reason to not want to play him here for seventy eight hundred. Yeah, uh, it, uh, you have to kind of like he, he's just in a really nice spot. That Rangers lineup is not like not anything to be worried about. Three point five run implied total is tied for the worst for the day. So you know Vegas isn't exactly expecting much out of the Texas offense. Um, I like Snell a lot. I just happen to like Garcia more and, you know, two other guys more. <laughs> but he'll be in, I guess, maybe like 10% of my lineups, 15% of my lineups, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. I think 
I think you might even be underweight on the field, maybe a, a little bit near the field on FanDuel there. Yeah. But on DraftKings, I think he's going to be pretty healthily owned. Agreed. You can see this total, and it's the Rangers. Um, and people want Snell to be a thing. So Snell might get higher ownership than even Jaime Garcia, who's $700 less on DraftKings. So you can make a case for either guy in tournaments. I like them both a lot. I think I prefer Snell a little bit, though. Yeah, I would, I, I'd be fine having more Snell than Garcia on DK. I mm-hmm. prefer Garcia, but like I'd be I'd be fine going that direction if we thought Garcia was going to be super popular. Um, I don't have any interest in any Rangers bats. I think we're on the same page there. Yeah, just if you wanted a leverage bat, it would be Adrian Beltre for me. Agreed. But since I'm a one lineup guy and pretty good chance Snell makes my lineup, then I'm not going to do it. But that doesn't mean you can't. Now I'm I'm doing backflips to roster the first five guys in this lineup for the Rays. They, they are like the perfect stack for DeGrom tonight. Bunch of righties in a row. Like, they're not good. You know, they all, the, like Duffy, Daniel Robertson, Carlos Gomes. I'm not, like, excited to have them, but they all grade out really well. Four and a half run implied total, I'll take it. If I need, like, a cheap, less popular stack, I'm cool with running out the top half of the Rays lineup. Yeah, exactly. So these are guys, these righties that, that strike out a ton, but you're facing Martin Perez. He's, he's going to let you hit the ball. And if he makes some mistakes, CJ Cron and even Daniel Robert, uh, Robinson, no, Robertson, um, he has a 40% hard hit rate against lefties going back to last season. Carlos Gomez can hit lefties. Wilson Ramos, we know, can hit lefties really well. So I like the t- uh, two through five, I think. I don't. I don't think I can play Matt Duffy for 3,200. Um, 2,800 on FanDuel. Um, I'm bringing him along for the ride. Yeah, I mean, that. you can definitely make a case for it. I just think that I could find better options at 3,200 or around there for a third baseman. So, Absolutely. I mean, I like Robertson quite a bit. Second base and shortstop eligible. Um, he's not a big name, so people probably won't be – super jack to roster him but i like him quite a bit yeah i could easily go two three four five to grom and basically whatever i would want to fill out the rest of that lineup and i'd be very very happy i'd expect yeah. the rays to pop up quite a bit when we run this oh i'm sure they're so cheap on FanDuel particularly they'll be in i would imagine some combination of every de grom lineup yeah Exciting stuff. I love grabbing uh, three, potentially three under 400 slugging percentage bats and being happy with it. <laughs> uh, Braves and Phillies. At least we get a chance to beat the Phillies again. Braves, 3.9 run implied total. Phillies, 4.1. 48% chance to win for the Braves. Julio Terahan on the hill. Aaron Nola going for the Phillies. Um... I like Nola here. Uh, the Braves make me sad sometimes, but they are running out a lot of lefty bats. So I preferred DeGrom to Nola if we're talking about the top two guys. I think it's just a better spot. Uh, but my constant Braves pessimism says um, righties have been making them look silly for the past week and a half. Or at least righties with swing and miss stuff. And uh, Nola certainly has that um, in his arm. So, I'll have a little bit of Nola. I'll be cheering against every lineup that I have him in. But uh, I think he's in a good spot. The Braves bats don't scare me at all, outside of Freeman. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, the Braves have been pretty bad. We've seen them get dominated by Strasburg and Scherzer back-to-back last week. And I foolishly faded them (laughs) two nights in a row. I don't think Nola is quite on the level of those guys in terms of his swing and miss stuff. His whiffs are a little bit down from last year. His swinging strike rate hasn't been to a place where I want to see if I'm going to pay 10-4 for a pitcher on DraftKings. Yeah. So I don't think I'm on Nola, and it's it's a slate thing too. Like I'd rather just get up to DeGrom or down to some of the guys we talked about, Garcia and Snell, and then Castillo, a guy we'll talk about next, I think. So I don't know. It's just a, it's a slate thing. I don't love Nola's price. And then I am scared of, like, Freddie Freeman and Ozzy Albies. Yeah, I want to be scared of those guys. 
Well, I'm definitely scared of Freeman. Freeman's been Freeman's been raking. Uh, he he doesn't count in any of my Braves analysis. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's just been good, but you know, like Inciarte slash line 179, 242, 214. It's not good when you've got 63 plate appearances in the can and your slugging's below your on base percentage. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of a bummer. Uh, yeah, I'll have a little bit of Nola. He's just like a half step behind Degrom, so that's gonna it's gonna limit the amount of times he pops up. Um, I don't want any part of any Braves bats. You know, I would if I ended up having like if somebody forced me to take Freeman in a one off, I, I wouldn't cry about it. He's just good. Uh, so that's fine. Um, I'm cool with grabbing a little bit of the top half of the Phillies lineup, but I don't really love much of anything in this game. Low low implied total, 3.9 for Braves, 4.1 for Phillies. Uh, it's, it's just not really an appealing game for offense for me. I like the Phillies quite a bit. So okay. I, I'm, I'm with you with, um, with Atlanta Bats. I mean, Freeman's always a decent one-off against a righty, and no one's going to play him for 5,200 on DraftKings. So he's a guy that can double dong pretty much any time he's facing a righty or facing anyone. Yeah. Um, but Teron has been pretty bad against lefties again this year. Got Carlos Santana, Herrera, Nick Williams. So those are the three lefties I really like for the Phillies. Nick Williams for 2,900, like that's always going to get my attention. He's just got such huge power. that And Teron can't get lefties out. So um, he's got a 632 xFIP against them this season. And he's got then, a 597 xFIP against everybody on the season. Yeah, he's just <laughs> he's not good. He, he doesn't have it figured out. No. And Williams and Santana and Herrera can definitely take advantage of that. And then you've got Reese Hoskins jammed in between them for 5400. So I'm not crazy about that price against a righty, but he's just been awesome to start the season, and he can homer off a. a league average righty like Teron is we're giving him some credit yeah (laughs) I was being being nice yeah uh yeah I don't for me it's just like a there are better stacks out there I don't love the implied total uh the top three guys guys grade out pretty well for FanDuel but I'm just this game is mostly just a full stay away unless I'm having a little bit of Nola I don't expect to see either of these teams showing up when I run this yeah that's fair Go Braves. <laughs> Brewers, 4.6 run implied total. Hosting the Reds, 4.1 run implied total for them. Uh, 56% chance to win for the Brewers. Brent Suter going uh, for Milwaukee. Luis Castillo going for the Reds. Um, I know that you like Castillo tonight. I do not like him on FanDuel. Uh, he's a much better play on DraftKings, in my opinion. And uh, for Suter, I'm not looking at him at all. So this is going to be a, a bats game for me. But let's hear the Luis Castillo pitch. Yeah, I, I just he's he's 7,300. It's just too cheap for a guy with his talent. Agreed. So this is a guy that I'm going to look deeper into as the day goes on, like his velocity and all that stuff. I I didn't check that last night, but it's just a guy that's too cheap for 7,300. He's got 10 strikeout upside, and you can't really say that about anyone else in this price range like realistic 10k upside um the brewers bats aren't that scary against righties like thames and shaw are the two guys that i um that give me pause but he can get out all these righties he can get out all these lefties if he's on he's just got such a good arsenal of pitches mid 90s fastball like he's just a really good prospect he has not put it together yet this season and he's going to get a lot of ownership until his price goes up. But I just like, I just see him getting 15, 20, 25 points here most of the time. So I'll I'll take the risk with Castillo for 7,300. Yeah, I get it. Electric arm, uh, fastball velocity down two miles per hour so far this year to last year, but it's also the beginning of the season. Um, I would imagine that number rises as the months get warmer. So it's probably down a little bit more than you would want it to be, which is interesting. Um, Just something to keep in mind, I guess. 
Now that I'm uh, working with my second monitor here, I was just popping that up as soon as you saw, as soon as you mentioned it. So it's like, oh, I have like he's just right in front of me. Let me just click on it. Uh, yeah, I don't because of the the win, um, and then being you know relatively decent underdogs. It's not a direction that I'll go on Fanduel. I like him as a pitcher. Uh, it's just not the best fantasy spot uh, on on the site that I play at. I just want a ton of the bats, particularly the Brewers. Um, yeah. You know, Thames and Shaw are a great start getting the lefty-righty side of it. But just price-wise, I, I just want these guys. Braun's price finally uh, moving up a little bit on FanDuel. He's 3400 now. Uh, finally getting him out of the like the $2,600, $2,700 range where he was for the past couple days, which was just insane. Um, Brewers' bats are just cheap. And with a 4.6 run implied total, and it's one of the better implied totals of the day. Actually, I've got it in as third overall right now so we'll see where that goes um do you have the weather for this game right now oh they've got the they've got the retractable roof oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna, oh my god i had it's gonna be flopped in my head no that's i i did that with seattle the other day a guy a guy corrected me so if we ever get any of that stuff wrong like just just comment or yeah. hit us up on twitter because just tell us we're stupid I, in the comments yeah. on twitter yeah like i i don't mind like i'm gonna get a lot of stuff wrong so yeah, when I don't have it in front of me. Like, I put people in parks they don't play in any longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just correct us. Yeah. Uh, but Brewers bats are just too cheap for me. Like Lorenzo Cain, twenty seven hundred to lead off. I'm in. Um, you know, Braun, I'll just be in regardless. Thirty four hundred. Domingo Santana, twenty eight hundred. Like, I'm just going to take shots on these guys. If I desperately need a second baseman, Jonathan Villar is 2,600. Like, if he's part of the stack, great. Uh, I'll just take advantage of the price. This is another team where I might have a bunch of them with uh, a DeGrom or Nola as a starter. Um, they're not, like, my high-end stack or anything like that, but I think they're a, a very nice value on the off chance that Castillo doesn't have it going tonight. I'm a little nervous of Castillo just as a pitcher in general, but the 4.6 run implied total has me feeling like I shouldn't be. Yeah. Castillo, yeah, he's definitely someone that can get blown up when he doesn't have it. And that velocity's down. He very well could be nursing some sort of injury. I think I'm going to give him one or two more chances as, as long as the Reds are going to keep throwing him out there and he's priced like this. Like, I'll still take the chance that his velocity's just down. It's the beginning of the season, whatever. But um, you can definitely make a case for some Brewers bats on the other side. Like Shaw is only thirty four hundred on DraftKings. Yeah, that's a great Thames, price for him on yeah. DK. Like that's just a really good leverage bat too, and you don't really have to pay up for it. Not even close. So, yeah, the other the righties are a little bit too expensive for me if I was stacking the Brewers. Yeah, but it is a good leverage stack. I think Castillo is going to be pretty decently owned. Do you know how bad the Reds are right now? No, I'm sure they're awful. Two and thirteen. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one thing. You, like, I never pay attention to records when when I'm playing DFS. So, like, I just like I never pay attention to who wins, who loses. So, I don't know who's an actually good team based on their record. Yeah, the game <laughs> outcome only matters to me if I have that starter. Otherwise, exactly. like, or the Braves. Otherwise, like, I don't know. I it, I don't end up looking at that final score again. Uh, we mentioned this before. I think it. I like growing up. It was turn on Sports Center before you go to school. Yep. And you know everything that happened of value. And now it's like they're, you know, I don't, I haven't turned on Sports Center and I couldn't tell you how long. I pay attention yeah. to whoever I had in my lineups. The outcome of that game is irrelevant unless I had the starter. It's just that information that's gone. Like I had no idea the Reds were 2 and 13. That's really bad. Yeah, really bad. Neither did I. Yeah. So. But they're, they were also really bad. Like I didn't expect them to be good either. <laughs> right. uh, do you like any of the Reds' bats here? Like, I like power righties against Suter. I don't really like stacking against him. I think I've talked about this. Like, he's just a gimmicky pitcher, yeah. and he's not going to strike out guys. But Adam Duvall for 3,700, the one guy that I'm keying in on keying in on here. But there's not really a lot of righty power in this Reds lineup. No. So I, I, I don't really like the bats on the Reds side outside of Duvall. Yeah, I don't. They're grading out really well for me because their price is so low. Like Hamilton's twenty nine hundred, Peraza twenty four hundred, 
Duvall, 2,400. Even Joey Votto is only 3,700 on FanDuel. So, like, yeah. he's probably underpriced just because of how bad the Reds are right now. But it, I'm not – it's not the spot for me. I, I, I hope that I don't have any Reds. <laughs> yeah, me too. All righty. A's and White Sox. Uh, A's with a 4.5 run implied total. White Sox, 3.8. It's a 58% chance to win for Oakland. Daniel Mengden on the hill uh, for the A's. Ronaldo Lopez going for the White Sox. Um, I'm not on Mengden at all on FanDuel. I'm not on Lopez even more so on FanDuel. Uh, Mengden looks okay on DK to me. What are you thinking there? Yeah, I mean, on a different slate, I think that Magnin would be a guy that I would look at if the pricing was super tight or we had a bunch of aces that we want to pay up for, like a Scherzer or Kershaw or, or someone like that, or yeah. like Godley, uh, even though he wasn't an ace <laughs> yesterday. So that's kind of a joke, but um, he's never he's never above like 9K. No. Um, but like $5,900 from Magnin, he's like, just look at Vegas. So under four total for the White Sox, he's a guy that doesn't really strike guys out but the white Sox are not very good against righties no. if you look at their individual hitters moncada is a guy that i would really like tonight for 3400 on DraftKings at second base but then outside of that i was going through just like the individual white Sox hitters and i don't really like them against Magnin. so he's going to be really low owned and i think he's worth a flyer he'll be very different if you're paying out or paying for him and center guard, you'll get a different lineup construction. Degrom, for, or yeah, Degrom. Um, so if you're paying up for Degrom, he makes a little bit of sense. But I just think he's too closely priced to Garcia. Like I'll find the extra twelve hundred dollars, or get up to Snell and just sacrifice a batter too. I, I completely agree with you. He's, he would be fine. He's I'm just like indifferent to the scenario now. The the implied total is nice. Uh, for, I'm talking for uh, at least for DK. Uh, I yeah. don't really see him in play much for FanDuel. Um, and I was I'm with you on Mancada as a bat for the White Sox, but that 3.8 implied total is not a direction that I'm trying to go all that much. They're they're just priced really well. Like Jose Abreu's only 3,400 on FanDuel. Garcia's only 2,900. Uh, it's like sneaky appealing. And then Delmonico is actually only 2,200. So you can create a, a really interesting White Sox stack, particularly on well on both sites. Yeah. I just with that three point eight run implied total, like I just can't imagine me wanting to do that. They're yeah, they're super cheap, which is weird because Mengen's so cheap. So usually it's the inverse. The bats are priced up when the pitcher's priced down and stuff. Yeah, but it's decent hitting weather here, um, wind blowing out to left. So that's why I like Moncada quite a bit. But Abisal Garcia for thirty five hundred is always a guy. You can talk me into. I just think he's a, a pretty good hitter, and 3,500 is too cheap against a guy like Mengnen, who his specialty is not missing bats. So that's where how, I'm at. How big are Abreu's pull numbers? I mean, I'm getting into um, it now, unless you know off the top of your head. Oh, not that bad at all. He there. he's he just he's real neutral. Yeah. Okay. So he he hits both ways. Yeah. I think 30 percent pull, 30 percent oppo, 38 center. So. Oh, yeah. Um, right center field, the, that ball's gone. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so not a lot of White Sox, although I sneakily love their prices. I mm -hmm. just don't think it's going to be a direction I go because of their runs. Um, what are you thinking about in terms of A's bats? I really I like Matt Joyce if he's leading off. Yeah, so Joyce um, for 3,100 3, is always a guy you can play. Uh, Jed Lowry never gets priced up for some weird reason. 3700 so he's gone up like $200 in the last two weeks. And then Matt Olson for 4000 huge power. Lopez is, he's got an under 13% strikeout rate against lefties and 632 XFIP since the start of 2017. And, I mean, I love those three guys, those three lefties, and then Chris Davis would be the other guy I'd want to put in there, just a guy with huge power, and he's 4200 So I don't mind using him against a righty. Yeah, I, I don't love the, the the pricing isn't the best for the A's on FanDuel tonight. 
but I think that I'll probably need to take a little bit closer of a look just because of the implied total. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, it, it's Joyce is a pretty clear number one. Only 2,900 on FanDuel if he's leading off for this lineup. Uh, I'm in for that. Uh, I would say that Matt Olson would be the next spot that I would look. Um, I can see them being like a three-man stack on FanDuel. If I needed another shortstop or second baseman to fill out, I, you know, I can pretty easily go to Semien or Lowry. But I don't know. It's something about the pricing is just not making this jump off the page for me. Yeah, that's that's understandable. And I just think the A's will be pretty low-owned. Um, so I like those four guys, really. Okay. Move on to the Mariners. Let's do it. Mariners and Astros. Uh, 3.7 run implied total for the Mariners. Astros, 4.0. It's a 54% chance to win for the Astros. James Paxton on the hill for Seattle. Dallas Keuchel going for Houston. Um, I don't have any interest in Keuchel on either site. And uh, if I were going to look at Paxton... I would probably have even less interest for him on FanDuel. Uh, his price is a little bit better on DK, so that would probably be the only direction I would be going if I were looking at any pitching would be Paxton on DK. Yeah, these 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 are two good um, real-life pitchers, and Paxton's actually a really good DFS pitcher in the right matchup. Like, he can K a lot of guys. He had 10 strikeouts in six innings in his last start, but this is... I don't think it's this in the matchup. No, no. <laughs> This is probably, along with like the White Sox, probably the worst matchup in the league for a lefty pitcher. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of guys that crush lefties and also don't strike out against them. Like Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa, Uriel, Gaddis. Like that is a brutal top six to face. And like for 8K, you're not getting a huge discount on Paxton. I mean, it is a a pretty nice discount. He's probably like a $9,500 pitcher, but not low enough on this slate where I want to actually think about using him. I'd rather use some Houston bats if I had to choose. Yeah, I'm not going to use anything in this game. Like, literally zero. I don't want a hitter or a pitcher at all. <laughs> I mean, and you can just... I mean, it, you can definitely make the case for that. These are two good pitchers, like I said. And yeah. they're probably neither one of them is probably going to get blown up. Um, so the, the guys I have some interest in as one-offs would be Hanniger and then, um, maybe a Correa, but super expensive again, Correa or Bregman for 4,300. Yeah. This is just not a spot where I'm going to be spending any money. Um, low implied totals, like good pitching, high priced mm -hmm. hitting. I, I just, I can't imagine I'm anxious when I click that uh, when I click that crunch button. I'm anxious to see how little amount of Mariners and Astros logos pop up on that left hand side because it's going to yeah. be next to nothing. I, I doubt it will be a lot. Yeah, I just and the I don't love the pricing for the pitching enough to get there. Paxton, third most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. I'm certainly not going that direction for a guy going against the Astros as an underdog. Mm -hmm. That's just he should barely be owned on FanDuel. Right. I think that's enough about of, about that game. Final game on the slate, Padres and Dodgers. Uh, Padres, 3.5 run implied total. Dodgers, 4.5. It's a 61% chance to win for the Dodgers. Uh, Robbie Erlin going for San Diego. Hunjin Ryu going for the Dodgers. And uh, that's my second favorite spot on the day for pitching on FanDuel. I uh, love Ryu. I think he looks really nice on DK. He would probably be my primary pitcher on DraftKings as well. So I'm anxious to hear your thoughts. Yeah, right. Ryu is a guy that I I just never play him. And he's usually priced in just a spot that I don't really want to play him. I don't really want to play him here either. Um, almost 10K on DraftKings. What, what's his price on FanDuel, did you say? <laughs> 7200 yeah. He's okay. Seventh, oh, yeah. That's right. We were seventh most expensive this. pitcher on the day. Yeah. All right. Then, then he's got my attention a little bit on Fanduel. Um, I, I can't really get past the hard contact numbers for the righties for him. Almost thirty-seven percent over the last year and change. And then Perella has just been awesome. So I like Perella 
and Renfro a little bit. Villanueva has been crushing homers against lefties. So those three scare me. And I get it if you don't want to use uh, San Diego bats. Like I think that Ryu is a pretty good real life pitcher. But um, Perello would be the one guy that I'm looking to use for my lineups here. Okay. Uh, but I get it uh, for 7,200 for Ryu. Yeah, with, with wins being super valued on FanDuel, his price, 61% chance to win for the Dodgers. Like a full run ahead of them in uh, implied total. 3.5 run implied total for the Padres is is tied for last with the Royals and Rangers. So, you know, at worst, they'll probably have a bottom three projected offense. Uh, I can't get enough of him here. Uh, they don't really have any righty bats that like super scare me. Their best bat is obviously Hosmer, and then we're getting the lefty lefty matchup mm-hmm. there, so it kind of negates it. So, for me, like he's going to pop up a lot, and in my opinion, probably not enough. And that's just sort of because Jaime Garcia has an even more ridiculous price. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't really have a ton of interest in the Padres bats because of that implied total. Uh, Dodgers bats. They grade out really well on FanDuel. Their prices are crazy muted. Uh, so, like, going Taylor, Seager, Puig, Hernandez, Kemp, all guys that with low prices. You know, Kemp, 2600 Taylor, 2900 You can get Puig for 3000 against a lefty. Like, I, I'm going to have a ton of Dodger stack. Um, Puig, in particular, is going to be one of my highest-owned guys. To get him at 3000 hitting in the heart of this order... Um, you know, I, I don't love rolling into San Diego and grabbing a bunch of hitters, but some of this pricing is just insane. Getting Corey Seager at 3600 like, I'm just in. I'm in for anything the Dodgers want to give me mm-hmm. today. Yeah, and it, I think it'll be decently low-owned because of that park. And there's some wind blowing in from left, it looks like. But I still like a lot of these Dodgers bats. This guy, Erland, is um, he's more of a middle reliever uh, based on what he's – or how long he's pitched, the longest he's gone is three and two thirds this year. So he won't be going past like three or four innings if he's pitching well, it looks like. So I like Chris Taylor leading off for 3,800, going to get a lefty at least twice, probably. And then um, Puig for 4,800, Kike Hernandez for 3,900. You can play him at first or second. Bellinger, he, even. Go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, you go. I was just gonna say, Kike Hernandez price on Fanduel twenty three hundred. Yeah, super super cheap, <laughs> and it seems like he's always like that because he doesn't really like he'll he'll not play for three days at a time, or at least he would last year. Yeah. So Fanduel will just price him down. But these Dodgers bats have been pretty awful to start the season. I don't know what their record is, but it just seems like they're not hitting at all. So I get it if you don't want to play them, but I think this is a spot where they could break out. Maybe not with home runs in this huge park, but they can definitely um, hit some doubles here and get some guys around the bases in other ways. Uh, Dodgers five and nine right now, negative yeah. eight run differential. Yeah, I mean they just haven't been good. They have not been hitting at all. But this is a reliever. It's going to be sort of a bullpen game for the Padres, and I like the bats one through six really, and I don't really care about lefty lefty matchups in this game. Yeah, I, I'm just I can't get enough of the Dodgers. I'm doing backflips now. I'm looking at uh, the Dodgers like base runs and stuff. They yeah, they've just been not good. It's not even just like a statistical quirk. They're just not. They just haven't been good offensively so far. They'll wake up uh, soon enough, I would imagine. Puig has been good. Like just looking at his average exit velocity, he's 21st in the MLB in April. 95 miles per hour on average, just crushing everything. And then outside of that, like, Seager's been okay in terms of the average exit velocity. Taylor's been not good. Bellinger's been really bad. Um, But I think that this is a spot where they could bust out where they're going to be decently low-owned. Yeah, uh, Puig's slash line is some kind of terrible, but at least he's hitting the ball hard, I guess. He's going uh, 222, 283, 296, which is... Corey Seager, 200, 279, 255, but at least he's got the, the BABIP of 222. So, like, he's been a little unlucky. Um, yeah. But I'm willing to take my chances. Like, Puig at 3,000 against a lefty, I'm in. I'm just yeah. I'm just in. <laughs> Give me some of that. Yeah. 
because his power transcends ballparks. So, yeah, and it's not, these these guys can get it out of here even with the wind blowing in. Um, Puig has huge power. Seager's got power. Bellinger's got power. Um, Kike's got a lot of power. So does Chris Taylor. So all these guys could theoretically hit home runs. It's not like you're just relying on singles and doubles and triples. Exactly. All right, I'm going to grab the FanDuel projections first and throw them in, and we'll see what's popping up. But I have a pretty good suspicion I know how this is going to shake out. Yeah. It's going to be Rays and who else did we say? Oh, you like the Brewers and the Blue Jays, right? Yeah, and we're going to see – I'm anxious to see how much Garcia uh, Oh yeah. ends up being there. Oh, this is my favorite part of it all. Just seeing like everything that I said, just get blown up and be like, "Oh no, it's uh, it's actually this, this, and this." And yeah. you're real bad at math. <laughs> it's, um, always, it's always so depressing when I see it. And it's like, why didn't I think of that when we were talking about it? Yeah, no, it helps me too, just to see sort of where ownership's gonna fall. Because I think this, if nothing else, even if you don't MME, it's a good way to see how lineups fit together, if certain stacks fit together, if you can play two high price pitchers in a cheap stack. Like yeah. That's a good way to gauge ownership even if you don't MME. It gives you the the shape of the puzzle pieces, so to yes. speak. Yes. Perfect. That's a perfect way of putting it. Oh yeah. Matt Joyce. Okay, so that's way more Nolan DeGrom than I was gonna ex- that I was expecting. But I think that's because of how cheap some of those stacks are. Yeah. It's opening up the top end of pitching. Like, Garcia is 2%. I expected him to be 40 when we did this. I mean, there's just not a ton to pay up for on FanDuel that we talked about. Yeah. So maybe if you if you bump up his projection even more, um, or, or his raw points projection isn't high enough where he's a better play than Nola or something like that. Yeah, it looks like Blake. It, it's prioritizing Blake Snell, which is I'm more than okay with that. Uh, it was going to be one or the other for me, regardless. So I like that. We're getting a lot of man. That's even scattered ownership too. Blue Jays, <laughs> Hamilton and Peraza for the Reds at the top, which is not one I expected. I wouldn't expect the Red stack to be the first one that pops out, but they're just mm-hmm. the prices are just so low. This yeah. went in a different direction than I was expecting. Puig at 28%, I like. I like him showing up in the first column, but... The I Reds are... I didn't see this one coming. Yeah, I, I don't I don't get the Red stack, really. It's a price thing, I think. Yeah, it must be. It's not... Whoop, I didn't type that Brewer's word in the, in the right spot. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I mean, they grayed out really well because everybody's, like, sub 3,000 in price. So you get Billy Hamilton at 2,900, Peraza at 2,400. I mean, I guess I get it in a way. Yeah. If that's the, if that's what needs to happen to get to the Degroms and Nolas of the world. Are the I'm Rays? really I interested Rays. in like those lineups are locked too. Apparently, per Fantasy Cruncher. Huh. So. I'm going to have a really interesting night on FanDuel. Now, now I don't know what's going to happen when we throw these into DK. <laughs> yeah. That just took me... That, that shocked me a lot. I didn't see that coming. I don't want the Reds, so I'm a little nervous about it. Yeah, I, don't, I really, really don't understand outside of the price. But it is a lot of lefties. Up, or I guess Votto and Jeanette. Yeah, I guess Votto probably transcends it a little bit. Yeah, must be a run total thing and just a, a price thing. Yeah, one of my projections are garbage. <laughs> we can go that direction too. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, hit us up in the comments. What do you think of a, a red stack on FanDuel today? Maybe on DK, we'll see where that comes. But mm-hmm. tell me how dumb I am if I run out a bunch of uh, if I run out a bunch of reds. So let's load up two stacks. All right, let's see where we go. You know what might have been the issue? I might, if I didn't set a, a lower limit of salary, 
that might be the, yeah bringing the Reds in more than I would like it to. There's some Phillies. Yeah, Reds again here. I mean, you start off with Hamilton and Peraza at 3,100, 30 or 3,000, then Jeanette in the four spot at 32, and Duvall at 37. So right there, you're paying 13,000 for four of the top five guys, and then you got Votto. So it is cheap. Yeah. Like, it's not as ridiculous as it seems when you talk about it, and it's not as if like Suter is some guy, some world beater. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Right. Uh, it's going to be unique, that's for sure. Yeah. A lot of Cubs. A lot of Cubs yeah. on DK. I like it. A lot of Phillies. Yeah, I, I really like the Phillies. So maybe I didn't make that clear enough, but I, I think they're one of my favorite stacks. They're probably a top three or four. Okay. So. Snell, DeGrom, and Nola all in the 40s. Paxton to 30, and then Castillo to 11. Um, I think you would probably be upping that Castillo quite a bit, probably bringing that Paxton down a bit. Yeah, that's what I would do. But, again, it could be a price thing. I don't know how soft pricing is. I haven't played around with making a lineup too much yet. But I'm assuming you can fit in DeGrom and Paxton and a bunch of bats. Yeah, if you do – wait, DeGrom and Paxton? Yeah, that's why I think that it's coming up so high. Yeah, you can get six so of I'd, the 50 that I did, or six of the 100 that I did are DeGrom and Pax, and you yeah. get a lot of Cubs and Reds in those scenarios. Just because of how cheap the Blue Jays and the Rays are, you can pay up for two expensive pitchers in theory. Like, I would rather go with Castillo or Snell or Garcia as my second pitcher, but DK allows you to do it. You'd be looking at what, Snell and DeGrom? Snell and DeGrom, probably, for me, or Snell, or uh, DeGrom and Castillo. Snell and DeGrom get you 23. A lot of Cubs, Reds, Cubs, yeah. A's. Yeah, you can do a lot tonight. Yeah. Alrighty. That is it. Uh, do you have anything that you want to touch on before we wrap this up? We've been going for a bit now. No. Um, nothing really on baseball. I think it's a pretty good slate. Um, what are we looking at for hockey tonight? Yeah, we'll have the uh, stacks and spotlights out again. Hockey's been really profitable the last few days for me and for a lot of people that are reading my articles that I'm hearing about. So MLB is not treating you so well, or even if it is, and you just want to watch some playoff hockey, which has been awesome. Um, check out these articles, make a few lineups, and hopefully win some money because we're on a little bit of a hot streak here. So looking to continue that and ride that out into the rest of the season. Nice. Uh, NBA, but less entertaining tonight. Just two games. I'll have my projections up. We'll have a Slam Dunks article up and rankings up, but uh, no video for a two-gamer. Can't do it. Um, yeah. If you listen to me from yesterday, you probably had a lot of Carl Anthony Towns, and you probably want to punch me in the face. Uh, <laughs> if you thought that uh, Derrick Rose would take more shots than Carl Anthony Towns yesterday, you are probably good at fantasy sports. Yeah. I didn't see that one coming. No, I, I, I saw some pretty angry people on Twitter talking about that. So. I didn't expect Derrick Rose to have the highest usage on the Wolves yesterday. <laughs> Here we are. Maybe, that, maybe that's why they lost. Here we are. Uh, that's all I've got. Um, check out awesomeo.com for all of our rankings, spotlight hitters, spotlight pitchers, spotlight stacks. Uh, churning out tons of information on a day-to-day -day basis, so mm -hmm. you want to be here uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, congrats to uh, the people that did well in the single game um, contest. What was that? Saturday night. Uh, Pelicans and Blazers. I did not do so well. Uh, I needed more of the Pelicans side of that game. I, I was very heavy on the Blazers. Um, so I finished middle of the pack. I don't like bringing that up. I want to brag. <laughs> I don't want to talk about how bad I did. But uh, that's all I've got here. Um, check us out, awesomeo.com. Follow us on Twitter, uh, at Josh Engelman, at Jake Hari. We're around. Uh, best of luck tonight, guys. Have Good luck. One.